Welcome to the latest episode of Bass Fan Up Close. I'm your host, Todd Seisner, editor of BassFan.com. Today, we're going to continue with our Bass Day Ever series in which pro anglers take us back to the most significant single day of their tournament careers. For those of you who've turned into the first few episodes, you've been treated to some really interesting stories about how a single day can shape a career. And I'm really stoked to dive into the conversation with today's guest. Mark Davis is a living legend in the sport of bass fishing, a three-time Bassmaster Angler of the Year, a Bassmaster Classic champion, winner of five BASS tournaments, an FLW Tour winner, a 2019 inductee into the Bass Fishing Hall of Fame. Mark has pretty much done it all, seen it all, in a career that is now in its fifth decade. So I figured it would take him a while to narrow down his choices, and it took him all of two minutes, believe it or not. Mark currently competes on the Major League Fishing Bass Pro Tour, and he's joining us today from his home in Mount Ida, Arkansas, a stone's throw from Lake Wachita. So Mark, I'd like to welcome you to our Bass Day Ever series. I hope you and your family are doing well. Uh, some unprecedented times we're living through here today, so I'm happy you're able to join us for this, uh, this project. So we're gonna go back some 25 years, if my math is right. Just, to, I mean, almost to the day. May 20th, 1995 to be exact, that was Day four, the Bassmaster Illinois Top 100, as they were called back then, on the Mississippi River out of Moline, Illinois. Um, and there was a little something called the Angler of the Year title up for grabs at that tournament. Um, I think yourself, a guy named Denny Brower, some folks may have heard of him, and a guy named Shaw Grigsby were kind of the three main contenders that week. Um, why is that your best day ever, Mark? That was my ninth year on tour, and uh, I was a young guy at the time, uh, 31 or so. And I had, at that time, I had made like four or five classics. I was able to barely carve out a living uh, by tournament fishing. I was more or less in those days, uh, I, I, was, I was a bass fishing guy here at home. and I, But I fished full time on the road. You know, all the tournaments that, that there was you know, at that time to fish. So I, I, I mean, professional-wise, I was fishing them. So I had, I had really struggled. Uh, I couldn't quite give up the guiding gig yet, you know. I, I, I was still uh, trying to, you know, I was doing everything I could to, to make a living. But I had not won an event, nor had I won a big title. And uh, here, here it is. Uh, we're unfamiliar place for me mm. you know upper mississippi river mid mid upper mississippi river right uh fishing's not great you know out, out of the uh, out of moline uh quad cities area there uh, a lot of a lot of traveling a lot of locking uh, and a lot of little fish as i remember it was like a 14 or a 15 inch size limit on the river and that was tough you could catch a lot of 12 inch bass but uh, you know catching the keeper was a uh, limit of keepers was was really strong in yeah. fact a lot of guys were happy just to catch one or two bass so that kind of tells you what we were up against in that event there was it was a very stingy very stingy place that we were fishing so just north of there uh, uh you know a few more uh, pools the fishing mm -hmm. really gets good right i can just remember it bring, being brutally tough in mm. fact i was locking three times you know holy cow. i was going through three locks up three locks back yeah. and of course your fishing time was you had like two hours to catch it right so uh, yeah it was you know it was one of those kind of tournaments but i went into that event to tell you about the points uh thing and, and the angle of the year title trying to win that so it's a fairly tight race the three as you mentioned it was denny was in the lead and and Shaw and I were, you know, not far behind. And of course, you know, you go into a tough event like that, anything can happen. Going into the final day, the final day, uh, and I had not caught, I don't believe I'd caught a limit of bass uh, in, the, in, the, in the three days prior. You know, I'd catch two, I'd catch three, maybe I'd catch four, but I was doing pretty well. And, uh, I remember I thought, you know, this is this is a big opportunity. You know, if I could somehow pull this off, you know, guys were not, you know, ever catching one bass, they weren't catching any bass. It's not like a slug fest where everyone's gonna catch them, you know. Right. When you go to a stingy body of water, it's uh, you know, chips fall and, and you know, you never know what's gonna happen. I can just remember, you know, Tilly and I praying, you know, the night before just, you know, Lord fishes your will, you know. 
just I need some help, you mm-hmm. know, because I mean I was didn't know what to do, and I, all, the only fish I knew of were like way like a hundred and thirty miles, you know. Mm-hmm. And I was having to buy gas a lot three times. And I mean, there's a lot of stuff can go wrong when you're doing uh, something like that. Here we go the next day, and uh, I felt the greatest peace uh, running up the river that morning. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. I think I, I do know why. It, the, the Lord was giving me that peace from the prayers the night before. And I remember uh, I caught a limit of bass. I'm thinking, man, this is, yeah. you know, I've got, I've got a shot at this thing. I remember getting back into the last lock. And I'm looking around because because Denny was in that lock going up. Okay. And I did, and I don't see him in the lock coming back. I'm like, man, where's Denny at? And I was like 50 boats or 40 boats or whatever in the lock, and I don't see Denny. I'm thinking, oh, Denny didn't make the lock. Yeah. You know, and I do not want to win. Right, because someone's like your title because of something like that, you yeah. know. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of sick about it, you know. I'm like, I'm not, this is not the way. And I can hear an outboard through the lock wall, you know, through the locks. I can hear like a guy okay. over there. This, this, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking, man, they need to let Denny in, you know. Yeah. They pull the plug and down the water goes and we go out the other side. As it turns out, Denny actually didn't go through that lock. Okay. He decided not to lock. And uh, anyway, I guess he had a bad day. But I can remember all these things that were going that was going through my mind. I get back in uh, to the to the to the way in. Of course, you know, here comes the little entourage of, of media and whatnot. And right. Because I know the year's big. You know, it's a big story. Yeah. And uh, it's it's one of two things in those days that that, that really set your career on on the fast track and yeah. you win angle year, you win the classic. And uh here comes the the media, you know, and there was cameras and all that bit. And, and you had uh, no idea. You had no idea up to that point. Obviously this is way no, I have, you know, this no. is pre cell phones. This is barely the dawn of oh, the internet yeah. age, you know. So yeah, no yeah. no cell phones, no right. you know, no nothing. No yeah, bass it, track. It was, yeah. it was a different day. Yeah. And uh so I've got a weigh-in bag, and I've got, you know, I know I've got this fish that will just, boy, I mean, he just barely touches the line. Depends what ruler you're using. Yeah, yeah, yeah. one of those deals, you know, yep. and uh, and kind of what mood the tournament director's in, you know, that, <laughs> that sort of thing. So yep. uh, I, I get my, my four largest bass in, in, the, in the weigh-in bag, and uh, I'm looking at this guy, and I lay him on the on – because the, now keep in mind – if I take him up there mm-hmm. and he, and they rule him short, not only do I lose that bass, I'm gonna lose another pound, which is gonna probably cost me big, like big. But but I, but I also don't know, you know. I really need to t- do. I take the chance of weighing him and, and have. You know, I'm gonna get another pound, a quarter pound and a half of weight, right? Or do I play it safe, throw the fish back and and weigh these four bass in that I know will measure. Mm-hmm. And I and I, and I look at that fish and I roll him over and I measure him again. He and I I took the fish and I held it out to the cameras and, and I laid the fish down in the water beside the boat and I released him and everybody's like, oh, you didn't just do that. Oh, you just threw you threw the title away. Oh, you know. Holy cow. I'm like, hey. I'm I'm banking on these four in the bag. You know, I said yeah. they're all solid and. And we'll see, you know, because you don't know how it's going to all shake. Wow. And uh, gut-wrenching. I mean, just gut Yeah, I can imagine. You don't know if you're making the right decision or not. I weigh the fish. And, of course, you still don't know. Still, all we got to do the tabulations, you know, we got to see. And we got to wait yep. on, you know, Denny hadn't weighed in. Well, so you're just sitting over on pins and needles. As it turned out, Denny zeroed. Yep. Shaw caught one or two. And I went angle of the year. You you wound up finishing 24th in the tournament. Denny, yeah. even despite the zero on the last day, finished 34th, and then Shaw finished 60th. And all the like you said, after the points were tabulated, you had enough to uh, to catapult past both of them and uh, yeah. and win your angle of the year title. So that day obviously becomes a touchstone moment for you, right? I mean, absolutely. That day was. Uh, 
you know, it, it did a lot for me, probably more mentally mm -hmm. than anything, you know, because finally you're like, you, you've slain the dragon, you know, and, uh, I'd lost a lot of weight, you know, I'd had that, I'd had that, uh, biatric surgery, lost a lot of weight. Now I'd won angle of the year and lo and behold, you know, a couple months later, I won the classic. Right. And that, yeah. I mean, obviously, uh, I mean, 95 will go down as, you know, obviously the biggest year of your career, arguably. Yeah. I mean, you went on to win two other angler of the years in yeah. 98 and, and 01, but, uh, I but mean, without that day that yeah. I'm describing, yeah. I don't feel like any of the other would have happened. Can you, 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 you alluded to the, the surgery you had, had, uh, undergone the year before. And obviously that was no minor, uh, operation. I know that was a, a huge, you know, physical operation, a lifestyle change that came along with it. How did that improve your physical, I guess, stamina on the watermark going into that 95 season? It, it, it was a huge positive adjustment. You know, I battled, I battled weight uh, my whole life and I played sports uh, early, you know, in my high school years. And, uh, but gosh, I did, I just, uh, my metabolism was as, as such that I just gained a lot of weight. And boy, when I got on the road and you don't eat right, and you're fishing and then, and I started to really gain a lot of weight. I got up to, you know, gosh, I was like 390. Okay. And, and, and of course, you know, you can weigh, you can carry weight when you're young, but you know, as, I knew as, as time went on, it was just going to be detrimental to my health. And I tried, you know, I died, I died up and down and all that. And I finally, I said, you know, I'm going to do this thing. And mm -hmm. it's the best thing I ever done. You know, it, 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 it took the weight off. I lost over a hundred pounds. And of course, yeah, when you, you know, you can imagine if you're carrying a hundred pounds and you can lay it down. Right you know, how much stronger you are, how much better you feel. And, and of course, my, my fishing career was better. My life was better. Me and my health was better. Everything was better. And I've, I've, been, I've been able to, to pretty much, I've gained some of that weight back. I'm 56 now, and I've gained some of it back. But by and large, I've kept that weight off uh, throughout my career. And it's really helped, my, helped me, you know, long term. Mm -hmm. Now back to 1995, you win the Angler of the Year there, and then a few months later uh, in the summer at High Rock Lake, uh, you win the Classic and become the first angler to win the a Angler of the Year and the Classic in the same season. Um, so, you know, another notch on your belt there. And then obviously go on to win, you know, two more Angler of the Year titles. Um, I mean, just a transformative day, Mark, at a transformative time in your life and, and career. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time, Mark, here to share that story behind that day with us. Um, I mean, here's hoping you have many more days like it ahead of you here soon. Stay healthy, stay well, and I hope you guys are back on the water here soon. I'm ready to get back at it, Todd. Thanks for having me. And for the folks watching at home, we want to we wanna hear you about your best day ever. Log on to our social media channels to share your story or to drop us a note in our Facebook or our feedback section on BassFan.com. And for Mark and the team here at BassFan, I'm Todd Seisner. And may your next day on the water be your best day ever.